Today I'm going to go over some of the gear options for your bug out bag and this is in regards to hunting, fishing and trapping as well as some of the tips and tricks that I've come up with over the years. Now this gear I have below me, we're going to go over it, but it is by no means the end all and be all of what you can take. There are regional differences, there are products I've never heard of, and tricks I have yet to learn. But a combination of these items have taken care of me in just about every situation I have ever been in. So we're going to go talk about each one, go over the description. Most of them are multifunctional, and I try and be weight conscious. But from right to left, let's go ahead and see what I've got. Okay, starting out with the easily recognizable, and that is our Victor Rat Trap. Now, I see a lot of people packing two or three of these, and they work out for a time. You can catch mice, up to squirrels, maybe some larger stuff, but I have durability issues with this trap. First off, it's made out of wood, so if it gets moist, it's likely to crack and warp. It's also put together with staples, which means that you can only set this so many times before it starts ripping itself apart. It's also very heavy and very bulky. Now what I use instead is a leg hold trap, and that's what these two things are. These are 3.5 inch leg hold traps. Work out really well. Put your bait right there, and you caught whatever you were going for. Now you want to make sure that you've got this thing tied down and staked down so that whatever you do trap doesn't run off with it. But you can carry about five of these things, because they're so light, for every one of these traps. And that's weight wise, so very light trap. It's also made out of metal, so it's very unlikely that you can actually break it. And if you do, you can probably just go and bend it back together and keep on going. So that is my land traps thus far. We'll talk about snares as well in just a moment. Now moving on to cordage. I have three different types of cordage that I utilize out on the trail. Now, first off is your standard 550 parachute cable. And you want to make sure that you have real 550. And what that means is that there should be seven different strands of 50 pound pull inside of this green sheath. Make sure you have that. Now what that means is that I usually take about 50 foot of this stuff. If I take 50 foot and I take the outer core off, I should have 350 foot of 50 pound pull line. And I can make tons of snares, I can make fishing line, I can make nets out of it. Anything that I've got to bind, I've got in this small package. The more parachute cable you have, the better off you're going to be. Not only do I have that 350 foot, but the outside sheath is an additional 200 pound pull, and I still have the original. Works out really well. Now aside from that, I have something that most people don't pack, and that is bungee cord. I take about 25 foot of bungee cord, and much like the paracord, it has an inside curd, and it has about a dozen different separate lines. So if I wanted to take this apart and pull those out and utilize them, I can. Now I use this for slingshots, for Hawaiian slings, but mostly for traps. And I use this for uh, my snare traps. This gives me elasticity of maybe a springing branch pole where it goes ahead and pulls the animal up into the sky. Now I take this in about 24 inch sections and I tie it off and anchor it above the burrow or the game trail down to the trigger and then I tie the snare onto the end. And whenever that animal goes through and snares it, this thing triggers up, pulls it up, sets the snare, and for me, it keeps that animal off the ground where the fire ants will get to it pretty quick. Now you might say this is cheating. If you're surviving and you need the meat, there's no such thing as cheating. This stuff is worth its weight in gold. Use up a lot of it. Uh, especially you guys who've done a lot of primitive stuff. If you know what it is to try and find the exact right spring pole, exactly where you need it, the right size, the right springiness, you know how frustrating it is to set a lot of these traps. The more traps you can set, the better off you're going to be. Now attached to this would be again your snare wire. and This is what I have right here. This is Vietnam snare wire or trip wire. It comes in 160 foot uh, spools. You definitely want to take the spool out because it's very dense material. But this is some pretty awesome stuff. Comes in two different colors. Uh, green and yellow obviously. Very durable. Very slick. Works really well for snares. You can also bind with it, build other traps. Very, very handy material. But uh, 160 foot of wire, that is dozens and dozens of traps. Again, the more you got out, the more likely you are to have success. All right, moving on to a bit of the transitionary stuff. Uh, this right here, this is a handy product to have. These are called yo-yos. These are auto reels. Do check your state regulations. If you're practicing survival, don't use it. If you're in survival, do use it, but find out if it's legal to use. Now, I use this on land and water. It's designed for water, but for my snares, I'm going to go ahead and put my snare wire on here with a loop. This swivel right here, 
lets out just like this. A trigger system up here locks it in place. As soon as the snare is tripped or a fish pulls on this, it is going to self-retract. And this is amazing. This is your line, this is your bungee cord, this is your trigger, all in one. So you can go ahead and put that to the anchor point, set it wherever you need to, and it's gonna go ahead and do what you need it to do. And I use this in the water, and I use this on land, depending on what I need to use it for. All right, so handy, handy thing to have. Now, moving on with more of your auto triggers, I have speed hooks, and I usually ca carry about three of these. And speed hooks are used in lieu of bobbers. Now, you usually use a bobber so that you know exactly when to pull in your line to set a hook. Okay, so the bobber goes down, you jerk the line, you set the hook. This does that for you without you having to be there. The swivel right here goes onto your line or your anchor. This piece of metal right here bends down, hooks into itself. The hook, which you can switch out and the line you can switch out, comes down. As soon as a perch or a small fish or anything grabs onto it, these two parts, these two pieces of wire, will spring away from each other with a lot of force and they're going to set that hook. So you throw three of these things out, you check them every five to ten minutes depending on the activity you have in your water. And uh, again, the more things you have out there trapping and hunting for you, the more likely you are to catch something. Now, replacement parts and fishing gear. This is my fishing kit right here. And I have a multitude of different kinds of weights, different kinds of hooks and sizes of hook, and different artificial lures to use so that hopefully I have something that will entice the fish to bite. You want to have several different sizes and uh, weights of monofilament line. Right here on this top point, I have my 50 pound line. And I use this in the heavy rivers to make sure that uh, the monster fish or a big log don't break the line, make me lose the fish, make me lose my gear, make me lose line. I want to make sure that what I have, uh, I go ahead and keep so I can use it another day. I'm going to go ahead and mention this, and this is a trapper poacher trick, or frontiersman trick. And uh, I can use this for a turkey trap, okay? And this only needs to happen in a survival situation. You should not ever, ever, ever set this otherwise. All right, and if you do, hopefully karma catches up to you. But if you're in an area and you have turkeys coming through, you can go ahead and you can put this line very, very tight, about two foot up above on a turkey trail at a diagonal. And you can take my treble hooks, okay, medium-sized treble hooks, every 12 inches and you set it every 12 inches as the turkeys come through the trail their necks go across the line they get caught on the hook and you better be there to get them off that is only used in a survival situation all right morally it's not very acceptable to do in these times but if you're needing meat and you're trying to survive and live you do what you got to do so it's very important to have options and that is an option to file back now moving into the mostly aquatic. I use lots and lots of net traps if I can and this is one of my favorites. This is called an accordion trap. Very lightweight and expandable. Now this is uh, four funnel traps set on side. Pretty awesome little trap and it's extremely effective. Uh, I catch lots and lots of minnows, perch, small fish, snakes, lots of crabs, crawfish, just about anything uh, under the water and it only takes 30 minutes to an hour usually. I've even left this thing out on land one time and caught a small opossum, not on purpose, and I would not, uh, I would not do that again. That was an accident, but it happened. It worked. You can carry two or three of these things. Uh, you can eat the minnows if you need to, or you can use whatever you trap in here with your fishing kit and catch more and larger things. Right next to this, I have something called a loofah. Okay, you guys might not know what a loofah is, but your girlfriends do. Uh, a loofah is an interesting, interesting scrub, and it's a $2 thing from the dollar store. If you've ever messed with one and taken it apart, it's pretty awesome. you got one little loop and a knot holding this thing together. You break that, and what you're going to find is that this netting is going to expand. It's going to be 10 to 20 foot long, and it's going to be a tube about that big around all the way down. And you can make a seine out of this. You can make a bird net. You can make multiple traps, accordion traps, and whatever else you need. But this is an awesome material to have, and it's very, very cheap. So if, if anything else, you got some extra room in your pack, throw a couple of these things in there. At least you got something to talk about whenever you pull it out. Uh, aside from the loofahs, 
This right here is a gill net. Way light, very cheap from China. Gill nets are nets that you can spread across a uh, body of water. If it's running, the fish will run into it. You can put it across a pond or a small stream and you can actually go and push the fish into it so you can scare them into it. And it's designed so that when they get halfway through, their gills or scales get caught up in it. So you pull it up after you see the net start to bob up and down and you should have fish after a while. So definitely something good to have on. Uh, do check again because there are restrictions depending on your state on using these things. Now, over here, this is something that I, I am hesitant to go ahead and show you. And this is a spear pole. And this is a seven foot long, three segment spear pole. On the end of it, I have a three pronged paralyzer tip. And that's good for creatures up to about 30 pounds in the water. And I do a lot of spear fishing, especially at nighttime. And it works out very, very well. This is called a Hawaiian sling. And that is because of the surgical line that I have at the very end of it. Now I have a lot of people saying, oh, you can go make an out of ladder, or you can chunk a spear at a fish. The fish will see you for the most part, most times, and it's gonna dart away. I get around that with this. So you go ahead and load. Okay, so there's your strap, totally loaded. I can aim it at my fish, I can put it up to the fish. I don't have to move. All I have to do is let go of my right hand, and that spear is going to go into that fish. The fish doesn't see the movement, the fish doesn't have time to flinch. I speared thousands, literally thousands of fish using this method. Now, if you do not want to take this, and it is aluminum, it is pretty light, you can always just pack the surgical uh, tubing, or you can get one of the replacements. And you can go ahead and make your own spear on the spot, and you can make your own spear point on the spot. But the trick to this is, is having this elastic band, because that gives you all the surprise. Now you can gig frogs with this, you can stick this into a log or into a hole and pull out something furry. There's a multitude of things that you can use this spear pole for. But I'm hesitant to show it to you because that implies that we're out here hunting. All right, and hunting is great and everybody wants to be a hunter. But if you are surviving, likelihood is that you need to be doing a lot of other things. You need to be building shelter, you need to be getting firewood. There are dozens of other things that you need to be doing during your daylight hours instead of walking around hoping that you come across something and then uh, hoping that you actually get that something. You have lots of stuff to do. So I go for the trapping aspect. I think everybody likes your guns. I love the guns. But realistically, you don't have time to hunt. And if it really is a shit hits the fan situation where everybody's going out in the woods and you have millions of people now with rifles going out for deer, you only have about a month or two worth of deer, guys. All of them are gonna be shot. And everybody thinks that they're gonna stay there, but they're all gonna be wiped out. There's gonna be very few left, and those that are, are gonna be very scarce and very nocturnal and very smart. So eventually, within a few months, you're gonna be using your big 30 out six, your AK, either to protect yourself, which I respect, or you're gonna be shooting squirrels with it, which isn't very effective at all. So I, I definitely go ahead and go with the trapping aspect and messing with a small game as much as possible. Now there are a ton of variations that you can have to this, slingshots, slings, but it's a very steep learning curve. Uh, you need to have lots of practice. If you go ahead and depend on that, and you're gonna spend weeks and weeks and weeks becoming halfway proficient at it, you'll starve to death before you get good at it. So lots of options, make sure you have options. Now one of the last things, and you might have seen this at my foot, I have two different products here that I do not recognize as good gear to take in your bug out bag. And this is a mini pin. This is a reel pin. So here's your little bitty reel, a micro reel. And inside this pin, you have a small rod. And they're very cheap, and they look cool. They look like they should work until you try it. Okay, the rod's pretty cool. Okay, but I can just as easy go and get a uh, piece of wood or sapling or something to use for that. Your reel is junk. Okay, it might be able to reel things in, but you can't cast out. I've tried it in a number of different situations. I can't make it work. Uh, so I would not endorse this product. I have seen an open cast system of this, a little bit larger. I might look at that. But as far as this kind of reel goes, it's coming apart already. It doesn't work very well. I would not buy it. You also have this thing, and I've seen lots of pictures of it. And until it came in my hand, 
I really didn't know what to expect. This is a ready man card. And even if you're using it for your daily carry, I don't endorse it, guys. This thing is thin and flimsier than I th would have thought. Uh, you could probably use the hooks, but they've made the eyes of the hooks so small that you have to have monofilament line. You couldn't make your own line. You couldn't use anything natural. Wouldn't work. Spears, too small unless you're going after goldfish. Uh, the saws might work a little bit, but this thing is junk. You have a couple of toggles for snares, but again, you've got to have snare wire, snare strands that are that small that'll work. So effectively, I spent money on this and I wasted money on that, and I would not endorse buying the uh, Ready Man card at all. But guys, this is my kit. There might be a few things that I throw in there here and there, a few changes, especially if I know the region I'm going to. But uh, this is a start. Go ahead and uh, tell me what you think of it in the comments. Any extra things that I might need to look into or tricks I need to know, love to hear about it. And uh, like and subscribe. Till next time, trap on.